That's brief. My name is Ruth Hunt. I'm Chief Executive of Stonewall, which is the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender charity in the UK. I'm not an engineer. And on that basis, I will try and uh, talk, talk to you about this subject. I do want to just share a brief anecdote about my own upbringing that will shed some light on some of my thoughts about engineering. I just want to talk briefly about the construction industry. Now, I appreciate that engineering is a huge, broad church, but I just want to talk about the builders and the brickies. Because when I was growing up, my dad was a snagger. Um, he, he trained as an architect and an apprentice, didn't go to university, but was a snagger on site. And so when I came out at 15 in 1995, do the maths very quickly, um, his experience of gay was lesbian pornographic calendars on the walls, the use of the word gay to describe anyone who is inept at <coughs> carrying bricks or indeed fixing anything, and a very intrinsic knowledge of the experiences of trans women. Because on building sites, there were often women who wanted to transition. So he had a huge knowledge of trans issues, a great fear that I would be reduced into items of sexual titillation, and that gay men rubbish. So as an older man in the 90s, that was kind of his experience of what it was to be LGBT. His anxiety was that I would invariably be treated differently in any field of work I went into. If we fast forward 20 years, we haven't really seen dramatic change in some of that culture around some of those building sites. Things are changing, we see different ebbs and flows, but the whole sector, as acknowledged in this report, has not made as much progress as we see with banks, with some of the other industries. We're pleased that we've got 28 engineering companies part of the Stonewall Diversity Champions Programme. 28 out of 750, incidentally, and three are in the top 100. The lovely EDF, who what they don't know ain't worth knowing, it's always worth talking to EDF, Fujitsu, and of course BP, and IBM, who are in our star performance, the creme de la creme group. But those groups, those organisations are working a little bit on their own. They look outside the engineering sector to gain best practice and to gain pace. So we would love to see more of you as part of this work. I've worked at Stonewall for over a decade, and we always see new organisations coming through. And I remember when I started at Stonewall, we'd just begun working with the armed forces. And over the last decade, and I include MI5 in this observation as well, who came top of the index this year, we've seen remarkable progress. Once an organisation, once a sector makes a commitment to change around LGBT issues, you see that change and it captures the imagination. A word of warning though, some of the organisations we speak to, and some of you who have heard me speak before will know this, we work with organisations at five stages. Number one, do you have any gay staff? No, the organisation says, and that's my job. I tend to go and speak to organisations that feel they don't have any gay staff, maybe Church of England schools. <laughs> do you have any gay staff? Yes, and we've spoken to them, and he's very happy. Here is our staff. He loves working here. He's thrilled. He really enjoys himself. And they think they're fine. And they say, we're a meritocratic organisation. We only want the very best. We've spoken to him. We think it's fine. We certainly stand up to discrimination. Third stage, do you have any gay staff? Yes, we've got an LGBT network. And three gay men go to the pub every Friday and talk about how hard it is to be gay. And we go, OK, let's see if we can go up again. And then you start getting lesbians involved, and then the work really starts happening. <laughs> then you start getting trans women involved, and you start capturing and changing culture. Because that's when heterosexual people get involved too. Because what straight allies, what senior allies recognise, is that actually being able to be yourself is good for the whole organisation. We have a good perspective through LGBT. It's a good prism to think about things. But actually, secrets are toxic. Living on a site 24-7 with the same men day in, day out, and keeping a secret that your wife's thinking of leaving you, that's toxic. Keeping a secret about your sexual orientation is toxic. Secrets get in the way of productivity. So don't just think about this as the sake of your LGBT staff. Think about it as your general cultural transformation. Because that won't only just be good for your LGBT staff, it will also be good for your black and minority ethnic staff, your women, and your straight white men too. Because in this day and age, and I don't think my dad liked it, Straight white men don't want to work in an environment just with straight white men, talking about what it's like to be a straight white man. They want to work in other environments too. So this is a really good moment. It feels like there's a huge amount of potential. Stonewall is absolutely here to support you in any way we can. I would strongly recommend you coming along to our conference on the 15th of April. Then there's 750 people talking about all these issues across the whole day, not just in seven minutes as I've just attempted to. But 
We are absolutely by your side, and I hope to see huge changes in the sector to come. Thank you very much.